Hi there. Welcome to FoxSports.com's NFL Draft coverage right outside Radio City Music Hall. I'm Laura Oakman, joined by our fantastic FoxSports.com writers, Jen Engel, Peter Schrager, Alex Marvez. I'm going to start with you, Peter. Let's do winners. We're two days in, three rounds in. Give me the winners from these last couple days. I'm going to give you two teams that haven't been winners often that I really think hit home runs out of the park in the first two days. They are the Jacksonville Jaguars, first time we've said that in years, <laughs> and the Oakland Raiders, first time we've said that in about a decade. I think both of these teams are under new direction. They've got general managers that finally have their picks. You know, Reggie McKenzie last year for the Raiders, he didn't have any picks in the first two rounds. So this year, what's he do? He hits home runs, gets the guy he wanted, and DJ Hayden moves back. It's also a second-round pick in the draft for that, which they didn't have. So what do they do? They get Hayden, they get Seal Moore, and then they get a kid, Menelik Watson, who is out of England, who has played just a couple years of college football, that is a tremendous kid and a great athlete. Jacksonville Jaguars, Gus Bradley, Dave Caldwell. It looks like Seahawks South down there right now. They drafted two cornerbacks today after getting Luke Jokel yesterday. They get two corners today in Dwayne Gratz, and they also pick up a talented, talented player in John Cyprian, who's going to play safety. I love what they did, and these teams finally have good players, and that's what they haven't had in years. Yeah, the good news, I guess, is that Jacksonville and Oakland will be picking high again next year. I don't, so think, so. Don't, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I think they're so going to do awesome they're stuff, They're building these bro. teams. Yeah, dude. they're building them. Yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> hey, Peter, so anyway, uh, let's talk about a real winner here in the San Francisco 49ers. I believe they entered uh, Laura with about 72 draft picks. Yes. And, you know, they were able to capitalize on them. Day one, I love the trade-up for Eric Reed, such a super smart kid and also a great player on the field. Fills the void created by the departure of Deshaun Goldson to Tampa Bay. Then on day two, the rich get richer. They go ahead, trade down with Tennessee, pick up another third-round pick in 24. 14, which is really where they need to keep building picks because not all of the picks they take this year are going to make this roster. You take Tank Carradine, who I think can be really solid in that 3-4 defense. I love that selection of him. And you end up getting Vance McDonald at tight end. He fills a role that Delaney Walker filled. He's really a jack-of-all-trade players. It's how it is uh, at Rice, how they train their guys. Uh, you can look at James Casey, mm -hmm. the former Houston Texans fullback, now the Philadelphia Eagles. A guy is so multidimensional. So I love these picks by the 49ers. The rich get richer. Yes. That's why Trent Baalke, hey, he's going to be winning General Manager of the Year awards, I think, for an awful a long time to come. I think that's a great point. I, I think this is the time of year when you really see the teams with the great general managers. And we don't talk about that a lot, do we? I mean, we talk about coaches and this and that. And I, I love what the 49ers were able to do. And plus, they have that thing going out there when they move up, when they do something where you go, oh, it's the 49ers. They must be on to something. Like, you just trust that. It, you know, they put skins on the wall. They build up trust. That's the kind of organization they have going. And I'm going to go a little different, though, with my winner, if you guys don't mind. It's not a team. It's a class of people, and a class of people that I think have been held down for a long time. The junk butts, the big, <laughs> fat guys up front were the big winners for me in this draft. And I'll never forget, when I was covering the Dallas Cowboys, Bill Parcells used to always tell us, take care of your junk butts because they are the ones who take care of the people you care about. And so I love seeing it. I love seeing Jokel and Fisher and those guys going, you know, and usually what's the first round of the draft? The first 10 picks. We're talking quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers and sexy guys. Junk I think butt, this sexy junk guys. I'm all I think about the it. junk yeah. butt is back, you know, <laughs> like the, the new sexy, the big fat guy up front <laughs> who's making sure your big time investment is upright and healthy. I love that. Instead of big uglies, Big sexy. I like that much Big better sexies. for them. All right, I'm going to flip it. I hate when we do the glass half empty, but we always do. Let's start with you, Peter. Yeah. Loser. Same thing. It can be a uh, coach, player, yeah, general, you know the manager, team. Everyone is excited about Geno Smith coming to the Jets, but I think Rex Ryan's the big loser here today. I He's now got a quarterback controversy again. You know, he's got to make a pick here where it's Sanchez, whether he's on the team or not, it's, he's going to be in the decision-making process. Geno Smith, you got David Garrard, you got Tim Tebow, you still got Greg McElroy on the roster. Rex Ryan has another controversy, and this is the last thing that the Jets need. And I think about Rex's contract, and obviously he's here for another year. Then you look towards 2014, and hey, Sanchez was his guy all along. And now he's got this other guy who might not have been his guy. He's on the roster, and they had to shed all of that talent because of the salary cap reason. You know, Revis, Bart Scott, all those guys are gone, and they're filling it in with rookies. I think Rex, although this team might be heading in the right direction long term, set up to fail in 2013. You forgot the biggest reason he's a loser. He's got to figure out a way to get that tattoo uh, tat. off if uh, <laughs> Geno Smith goes well. It's the next big reality show, Rex's Body Art. We're going to do it. It's or gonna else Geno yeah. Smith needs to take over That's that it. jersey. That's, yeah. Save us, Alex. Go ahead. Loser. Uh, <laughs> you know, loser's another head coach who probably is, is probably a goner in 2014, and that would be Jason Garrett and at what the Dallas Cowboys did. You know, it's great in theory to trade down, right? right. Everybody wants to trade down. Well, what happens when you trade down and all the players that you have first round grades aren't there 
when you're up to pick. Then you end up with Travis Frederick. He is the Wisconsin center who was the 31st pick in the draft. A general consensus is this guy was drafted way too early. Even he admitted when I talked to him today that he was expected to get picked possibly as low as 40 in this draft. The Cowboys needed offensive line help. You, you reach for a kid there because there's no one else available on the board. Then with your second round pick, you're drafting Gavin Escobar of San Diego State. Are the Dallas Cowboys now going to a two tight end offense? If they're not, why are you drafting a backup player when you have problems on the offensive line, running back, safety, defensive line? It goes on and on with the Dallas Cowboys. 500 since the 17th game of the 2007 regular season. And that's a great point, too, because let's not forget, this is Jerry Jones, who at the NFL's owners' meetings went out of the way to say, listen, Romo's in place. I expect us to win and kind of put a ticking clock on Jason Garrett and then didn't do him any favors in the draft. All right, so we have the Cowboys. You're not allowed to bring up Rex Ryan's tattoo. Biggest loser for you of this draft. I think it's so USC quarterbacks. I mean, you want to talk about a team that's going to have a recruiting problem going forward. I mean, my, Matt Barkley doesn't get taken in the first three rounds. I mean, that went from a slide to a free fall to, I mean, now he's just jumped off the cliff. We, we don't know when we're going to see him. And I love the kid. I do. I think he's going to be a good NFL quarterback. But apparently 32 teams think I'm crazy. And so, all right, he was a loser. And then Mark Sanchez, another USC quarterback, he might be out of a job. I, and so, you know, I'd love to blame Lane Kiffin, but he's not on the hook for all of it. I just think the whole USC quarterbacking system, big Loser. That killed you to not be able to blame everything on Lane, didn't it? Well, it hurt you. There's a probably a way to. I just haven't figured <laughs> it out yet. Give me a little time, but I'm sure Lane Kiffin has something to do with it. All right, all three of you, thank you so much. I will see the two of you yes. on Saturday when we, we we break down winners and losers of all 32 teams. Thank you, and thank you for watching. Make sure to keep it logged on right here to FoxSports.com.